So today is a good day for those people that play PES 2020 or have access to the game because the new Euro 2020 DLC has arrived and is available in the game right now. Now this update is not going to be like a whole standalone game or anything, it's just like a normal DLC which features just a bit of free content and it hasn't got all the bells and whistles like the qualifying and all that other stuff. So basically what we're going to get in this update is the Euro 2020 tournament mode which maybe you can use qualified and unqualified nations because it says all 55 UEFA national team licenses included. So, yeah, you might be able to replace a few teams if you want to. We've got Wembley Stadium and St. Petersburg Stadium in this update as well. And then we've also got the official trophy and ball, and that is about it. So there's no story of qualifying. There's no um, player career mode or anything like that. It's just this tournament mode and maybe some, like, my club stuff as well. I don't know about that part yet. But regardless, if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like for me. It always helps. So even though we've got 163,000 subscribers on the channel, we've still got a majority of you guys not subscribed but watching the video. So if you want to know all the latest FIFA 21, FIFA 20 and PES news, make sure you subscribe today and join the other side. And if you want to buy some of the best Real Life Ultimate Team cards, you can customize these however you want. You can get them as a gift or for yourself. Make sure you check out the link in the description and use my code VAPEX for 10% off. So this DLC is located in the kickoff section of the menu. It's uh, got like an icon on top of it, so you'll find it pretty easily. You can do a local match of Euro 2020. Is that like a... Yeah, I think that's just a kickoff match. And then you've got the cup there. Man, the menu system is a bit behind in the PES games. So if we go into local match, you can just uh, see the theme come up and you can pick a match. This would be like your 1v1 against the computer or another friend or something if they live in the same house. It's also important to know that you can use all these 55 nations here and they should all be licensed, even San Marino. So let's see that. Yeah, they got their kit there as well. So yeah, they said that all these nations would be licensed. So you can have a Euro 2020 themed match with your favorite European nation. They should be all pretty much licensed. All right, let's go to the cup now to see what the actual Euro 2020 tournament looks like. So it's at the top there. You've got 24 teams. You've got group stage on, single match competition, final single match, and the third place playoff is off. And uh, we'll just open that up. Number of users. Okay, so you can have more than one player here if you have like a person at home or something. You can change the difficulty. Now I'm going to put a top player because when I last played Pez, Superstar was so like overpowered. So I'm going to put a top player. You can change the time, five, six minutes. Injuries on. I think I'll do five minutes and we'll press OK there. You can select a team. I'm going to have to go with England because the majority of you guys are from England. And uh, yeah, that's the group stages. So we've got Croatia, Bosnia, Czech Republic, Switzerland, Wales, Italy, Turkey, and the other teams there. It's not a big draw. It's just 24 teams. You can randomize this as well. So um, you can have different uh, nations in different groups and stuff. Now, I just found this feature which says group stages can be freely rearranged. So if you really wanted to replace a team or something, you can do that. You can pick uh, Sweden or something. You can press the replace button and you can switch the team there if you wanted to get a team out of the tournament and you wanted to have your own custom tournament maybe with some more powerhouses or other better european nations or something you just press the triangle button on the team and you can go and pick from another team that didn't qualify and is not in the official tournament so let's say you wanted to throw in greece or something uh, you can replace them right there if you wanted to take out portugal you wanted to put armenia Bang. With the press of a button, you can do that. So it's similar to the FIFA 18 World Cup DLC where you can randomize the groups as well, uh, replace teams, and also put in exact teams that you want to see in the group stages. And you can also change the groups around as well. But uh, yeah, let's go back. I want to have the official group. Now, I think there's a few nations here that are appearing in the group stages but haven't really qualified in real life yet. So there is a few playoffs that need to happen in certain groups like Group C and Group D. That's why you see Bulgaria in Group D. They haven't actually qualified yet, but they're just there as a placeholder. So yeah, because of what happened in real life, it's not really like 100% complete groups. But the teams that already qualified are in this tournament mode. And you can always replace them with different nations anyway. All right, so this is what the tournament mode looks like. Four menus, and that's about it. Very, very simple uh, design here. You've got your game plan. You can check your team there. You've got information, okay, about the competition. So, okay, so you can check different groups and that. You would think this would pop up on your screen. You don't have to go into all these menus. I don't really like how Konami does their menus. It just looks outdated. It's not very simple at times as well. Like, the tables should just pop up underneath or something. Like, they just show up. You don't have to click on information to see them. You can also save your progress and change your settings if you want. So we're going to change the match length to 8 minutes. And I did that because it's actually for the full match. In FIFA, it's match half. So that's why... I usually do about four or five minutes in FIFA, which means it's eight minutes. Let's start this match. Actually, I need to do the game plan first. Don't want to just uh, use the default lineup. 
Now, Pez is much more of a tactical game. I don't really know much of the tactics of this game. Um, there's different advanced instructions you can do. I'm just going to do my simple 4-4-2 today. You can't go wrong with a good 4-4-2. Rashford and Kane up front. Sterling on the left. We need a guy on the right. We'll put Sancho in there. Uh, in the midfield, we'll have Henderson. I don't even know what Lingard's doing in the team. Ah, oh, man, we've got Alexander-Arnold as well. So Trippier's going to come off. And we'll leave Chilwell there. Pickford in goals. Looks like a pretty solid lineup, you know. But like I said, Pez has a lot of different instructions. You can do possession game, counter-attack. I'm more of a counter-attack guy, I think. I don't really like to keep much possession. We've got advanced instructions. I think I'll just keep it normal. Uh, attacking fullbacks looks pretty good. I like Alexander Arnold whipping in the crosses and that. So we'll keep it at that lineup for the first game. All right, so immediately you get presented with Euro 2020 graphics. Looks pretty good, you know. This is stuff you would expect in an official DLC. You've even got this nice little uh, tunnel cutscene. Two captains there, referees walking out with them. That's pretty nice. You don't really see that much in FIFA. Yeah, you got the branding there, the thing on the floor. All very nice. Look at that. Nice graphics. I love the graphics already. It feels like I'm playing something fresh. I mean, it's been a while since I've played PES, but it feels like I'm playing something fresh, especially with the Euro DLC. I wonder what's going to happen next year. Are they going to have the same license next year? Don't really know at the moment. There's a different way to play PES than FIFA. FIFA, you just run around like a headless chicken sometimes. PES, you've got to be more controlled. You've got to think about your passing and that. It punishes you more as well, I think. Chilwell coming down the left. Bringing it forward. Just have a shot. Oh, not bad, not bad. Got to watch the one-twos, man. Oh, first shot of the day for Croatia. Good save. Now, the problem I have with these kinds of DLCs is that there's no qualifying mode. Like, imagine if they had a qualifying mode. It just increases the replayability so much. And they could do it. They've got all these uh, licensed national teams from UEFA that they could throw in and create their own like little qualifying stages thing even if it's not entirely accurate it would still be better than just having a tournament mode that means nothing after you play it a couple of times like how many times can you play with different national teams that's a good cross the ball gets cleared but what i'm trying to say is imagine if they had a qualifying mode not like those old dlcs in fifa and that where you could pick a team do the qualifying and then play the tournament and you could use different national teams and stuff have more fun have more replayability like how many times can you just do a tournament mode with different teams? It's not really that fun after a while. Like, this is something you'd play a couple of times, and in another two weeks, you probably get bored. What is he, what is he doing there? But, uh, yeah, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Like, I miss those old, really big games where it was about the Euros specifically. It was about the World Cups. I'm sure you guys have a few. But now these little DLCs are just basically, you know, not that much effort put into them. Alexander-Arnold crosses it. Sancho again lays it off. Can we get a first strike from Ali? And it goes 10 meters over the bar. The problem is you don't win this game through crossing, but I'll try. And that's not even a convincing volley. Come on, man. Let's lay it off to Deli Ali. There's space down the right. Here we go with Sancho. Bringing it forward. He's going straight to goal. There's nothing that's going to stop him. Has a strike. Good save by the keeper. Looking for the overlap. Here we go. Play back inside. Oh, wow. We've got a free kick if we want it. We take the strike. Kane's there. Can he get there? What are you doing? Why are you doing a bicycle kick there for? Here's Sterling. Have another strike, my friend. The finesse shot, and it goes wide. Man, Kane just had to jump. Why is he doing bicycle kicks in the box for? Look at this. What is he trying to do? Maybe he wouldn't have got there with his head. That's why he was trying it, but... Oh, man. Gets past one. Nice through ball. Keeper's coming out. This is the goal. Oh, the keeper's coming out. He's got the ball. The referee says no pen. That would have been a big call right there. Sterling, he runs straight to him. That was a big chance as well. I was trying to see where he was going to go. We blocked that. That could be the goal. Here's Sterling. Have a shot, Sterling. Oh, it's hit the bar. It hit the bar. That was the closest we got all game. If that went in, the place would have erupted. Unfortunately, it didn't. So the game we played is a nil or draw. I mean, this is probably the hardest game of the group stage, but we had our chances. Croatia did not do much. Man, that, that strike from Sterling should have went in, man. So I thought we'd continue on with England. I'll do some post-commentary, finish off the tournament, and see where we end up. Our next game in the group stages was against Bulgaria. Early on, we had a few chances. This was a very comfortable match. The guy loses his bearings there, plays it straight to Rashford, and I thought it was going to go in. The keeper makes a save. So this guy was like... I thought it was going to be one of those matches where the keeper saves everything, but... After that, we got the corner. Harry Kane with a powerful header. Steers it home. And we get our first goal of the campaign with the captain, Harry Kane. And uh, yeah, Harry Kane tore him apart this game. 
because a few minutes later, in the 15th minute, we get a corner. We repeat the same thing again. Harry Kane with the header, and it goes straight in. So basically, the first two goals were very, very similar. But hey, I'll take them. So we go 2-0 up in the first 15 minutes, and then Rashford hits the bar in the 37th minute. And then right at the end of the first half, Rashford makes a good run, holds off the defense, looks for Harry Kane across goal, and Kane steers it home with an easy tap-in. And that was pretty much the match. Everything else was very boring. The second half was boring. So, yeah, basically it was 3-0 against Bulgaria. Harry Kane gets the match ball, and we move on. All right, so we go into the game against the Czech Republic. Must-win game. And uh, early on, they were showing some signs that they could have won this game, taking a few shots, you know, trying to scare me a little bit. But then, in the 20th minute... Sancho, something happens there between Sancho and Rashford, but Rashford puts in a mad ball and Kane chips it over the keeper. Like, I thought initially it was offside, so I did like a, a freeze frame soon, and I think it does look offside. So if there was VAR here, maybe it would have been uh, disallowed, but I think Kane's left leg is ahead of the line. Now, I could be wrong on how offside works, but to me that looks offside. I could be wrong, but the ref allows it. We go 1-0 up, and then second off here, Kane, he does like a spin a rooney there. All he had to do was tap it in. And we lost that chance. But here we go. In the second half, Rashford tries to chip the keeper. It gets deflected and Kane picks up the rebound. And uh, that's it. That's 2-0. And that is pretty much the game done and dusted there in the 50th minute. Harry Kane is the only guy that can score for me. Rashford not really doing too much, but still pivotal in some plays. You know, setting a few things up here and there. But he can't get the goals. Here's a big chance for Rashford who kicks it over the bar. I thought he was going to score there. All he had to do was just tap it in. But anyway, we win 2-0. We go to the next round. And uh, yeah. Kane is absolutely killing it at the moment. Next up, we have our first knockout game against Poland, and what a match this is going to be. Early on, we get a mad through ball into Rashford, and uh, all he has to do is slot it home. But uh, he chips the keeper, keeper palms it away, hits Kane on the edge of the box, who volleys it into the keeper, who tips it to the bar. It was a nice save, but I thought we were going to score. But it ends up being Poland who draws first blood here. Nice through ball into Lewandowski, a bit of a mix-up there. Pickford sort of kicks his leg, but we get away with it. But it falls to Lewandowski, who recovers quicker than Maguire, and he back heels at home. 42nd minute, they get a free kick. We try and clear this. They header it onto the bar. I don't know how we got away with this, because it bounces off some guy's leg, and it's just floating in the box. Somehow we clear it and get away with it. I thought we were going to go 2-0 down there. A big chance here for Sancho on the right. The guy can't score to save his life. Just hits it wide there. Big, big chance wasted. And then on the 81st minute, we have a corner here for Poland. They look to cross it in, and they finally find someone, and he skies it. That was a big chance as well. All he had to do was keep it low. Probably would have went in. Big chance in the 88th minute for us. Sterling 1-1 with the keeper. Goes for the chip, hits the top of the bar, and it goes over. I thought that was it. That was the last chance we're going to have today. But we end up getting another chance right in injury time. Kane 1-1. Oh, he just couldn't find the goal. Keeper with a big save. It goes for the corner, and I tried to do what we've done all episode. Find Harry Kane, and we did, boys. Kane slots at home. I don't know how he did it. But in injury time, past injury time, it goes through the legs of the defender on the near post. And it somehow goes in. We are still alive in this match. We go into extra time. Lingard with a big chance. He chips the keep. I thought it was in, but it went wide. I don't know how he missed. And then uh, we try and clear that one. It goes to the edge of the box. Good save by uh, Pickford. And then another big chance. Lingard plays it to Rashford. who lays it off to Cole Walker. I don't know what he's going to do here. We try and play it across goal. And they clear it. I should have done better there. But in injury time, in extra time, Lingard with the finesse shot, very, very soft. Keeper picks it up, and that takes us into the penalty shootout. So a very, very tense game. We go into the penalty shootout. First up is Harry Kane, the man that has saved us all tournament. And he kicks it to the left, and the keeper makes a good save. And I was a bit devastated when that one got saved. Lewandowski up next. Is he going to score? Good save by Pickford. I guess right on that one, I was pretty happy. After that, because you don't want to miss any when it comes to penalty shootouts. Rashford up next, picks his spot, and it hits the bar. I was like, what the hell, man? How did that hit the bar? I thought I did it perfectly. And uh, next up is Poland, and he scores that one. That This is when we started to get in trouble, boys. And uh, who's next? Lingard. Lingard's going to go left here. See what happens. Another good save for the Polish keeper. And now we're in trouble, man. Now we are in deep, deep trouble. Poland up next. He scores, and it's 2-0 in the penalty shootout. We need to score this one, otherwise it's over. Sancho steps up, and it does a nice job. Keeper almost got to it, but we get away with that one. And now it's the last chance here. If Poland misses, we're going again, and they score, and it's game over. We have been knocked out of the Euro 2020 tournament in the first knockout round. I was a bit disappointed because we survived 
in the last minute with the Hurricane header, but it is what it is. We end up getting knocked out anyway. So the eventual winners ended up being uh, Belgium for that one. So yeah, they ended up winning the tournament. Now alongside that, Konami released some patch notes for data pack number seven, which is available alongside this Euro 2020 DLC. So they've added in uh, the Euro 2020 mode, obviously, and they've also put it in Master League and become a legend. They also updated some strips for the club teams and national teams, as well as some club emblems. Apparently there's uh, a few new faces, over 100 faces or something in this game that got added with the data pack. And there's also some My Club stuff and a gameplay fix there. So yeah, the main thing about this DLC is of course the Euro mode. Now since you guys are from England, you probably are wondering what Wembley Stadium looks like in the game. I think this is a new stadium that got added. It looks very nice. This is some gameplay. Obviously the lighting could be a bit better with the replays and that. It's not really the best at night, the lighting in this game. But it is the real deal, you know, you're not going to really notice much difference between FIFA and Pez's version. I hope you did enjoy my Euro 2020 playthrough. It's a shame what happened in real life, but at least we've got the DLC. But make sure you check out this FIFA video. Hit the card in the middle, it'll take you right there. I'll see you next time.